Hey folks, we need to have a conversation about the current mortgage and rate environment we're seeing in residential real estate. And rates have obviously dropped recently. Will they stay that way? We don't know. They could go down further. People are expecting rate cuts from the Fed um, and that could affect mortgage rates. Um, they could also go up. We just don't know. But to help us navigate the local mortgage market, I've got our local expert, Mr. Brock Fabro from Equity Resources right here in Licking County. How you doing, Brock? What's going on? Good, doing good. How you doing this morning, Jason? Great, great. Thanks for joining good. us. So uh, let's get right into it. What's happening? What are you seeing with rates and with buyers? And before you go, let me, I'll preface this by saying, hey, this, uh, the market's strange. I'm hearing it from a lot of realtors. I'm seeing it with my listings. It seems to be definitely slower than it was even last year, but significantly slower than it was several years ago when it was a feeding frenzy. So again, we want to know what's happening on the mortgage and uh, and rate side and how does that tie into the buyers and sellers out there? Absolutely. So you nailed it. It's a very strange market right now. You know, there's a lot going on. Uh, this month has been uh, a lot of conversation with rates, with home values, with uh, with buyers, we have this NAR settlement that's that's about to roll out this coming week. There's a lot going on, uh, but the main topic that we're seeing and talking about is rates. So, what are rates doing? Um, the last couple of weeks, if you're following what the Fed's doing, what these job numbers look like, um, you know we 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 saw mortgage rates drop, which is always a good thing. I'm getting a lot of conversations and emails from from clients, you know, sending me information saying where are rates at. You know, what are rates doing? Where are they going? That's almost an impossible question to answer. Um, two weeks ago, we saw job numbers come out. Job numbers were uh, definitely much lower than expected. Unemployment numbers were up. And then you saw rates really start to tumble. If you followed your 401k that following Monday, you also saw your 401k kind of tank. Um, so that's recovered a little bit. But the, the market is very, very fragile right now. And we just, we don't have a... We don't have a ha hand on it like like we 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 want to. So um, basically, what the sentiment is right now is in September they're they're talking about a half a point reduction um, with the Fed. So now that now they're talking maybe a quarter of a point. So what does that do to mortgage rates? Well, the half a point would obviously bring down our rates a little bit further. We've seen about a half a point reduction on the average 30 year conventional rate over the last few weeks, which is obviously a positive. Um, but September's really been the key date as far as what we're gonna see rates do, um, where they're gonna go. So they've been talking by year end to see a full point reduction or maybe three quarters of, point, of a point reduction. Um, I'm just not exactly sure which direction we're going. And these are the conversations I have with clients. You know, a lot of it is, you know, are we going to float the rate today? Are we going to lock that rate down, you know, down today? You know, what direction should we move? And it's a tough question right now um, because the market's so volatile and there's a lot of things going on. We have, you know, obviously a big, big election in November. Um, right. You know, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, how does that affect rates? And, um, you know, there's just a, a lot of confusion, a lot of questions and a lot of fear in this market. Yeah, great stuff. I would agree. All right, so let me ask you, uh, to the rate end, is there a chance they won't cut at all? Is there a That's chance? That's not necessarily limit, but, oh. what we're seeing. I mean, there's always okay. a chance of that. I, I would I would suspect that that's definitely in the conversation. That's not what we're reading. That's not what we're seeing. Um, at least a quarter of a point I would anticipate in September, but you got to understand a lot of a lot of that anticipation is currently already baked in to the rates that you're seeing today. Right. So if I quote you a rate, that rate's more than likely not going to change a whole lot as we go into September, because as far as the, the, the mortgage side of it's concerned, we're anticipating what the Fed's going to do, and we're going to bake that projected rate cut into today's rate. So we may see a little bit um, of a drop, especially if they go more than what we anticipate, but there's a lot we're looking at. We're looking at the consumer price index. We're looking at job numbers. We're looking at unemployment numbers. Um, you know, they're taking and literally dissecting every single word that Chairman Powell says in these Fed meetings. And they're trying, they're trying to get a grip on just, you know, his tone on, on what he's saying. And then, you know, then the markets will react from there because there's, 
you know, we have we have record high inflation right now. We have record high uh, credit card debt right now. You know, you're starting to see an increase in delinquency on credit cards. You're starting to see an increase in delinquency on mortgage payments. And that just really screams to a lot of experts recession. Are we in a recession? Are we are we heading towards a recession? And that's a you know, that that word recession puts a lot of fear in markets, not just mortgage mortgages and 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 um you know, it's really, it's really, you know, the stock market, four hundred one ks. Globally, we're seeing it, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot to digest. Yeah, it is, and I wonder, and so I wonder how much of that is the the fear of the recession, the fear of where your four hundred one k is going, um, and the uncertainty of rates. I wonder how much that's translating into the buyers. What I'm seeing anyway on the realtor side is the buyers are still on the sidelines, a lot of them. And a lot of the people that are trying to sell a home or thinking of selling a home, if they can't move up or comfortably move up into a nicer home or to their next move, they're not listing their home. And so when I looked this morning, active inventory for listings was really strange. So it was actually, when it comes to uh, homes that were that are over, 300 grand in Licking County were up 25% year to date in listings, active listings, but homes under 300 grand were down 4%. So there's a huge division line in the price point. So I'm wondering, I guess my question to you is, do you think that that, that fear and all that is, are keeping people constrained to not really make any decision at all and just kind of sit tight? Definitely. I think there's a lot of people sit on the sidelines right now, just kind of paralyzed on what they should do. But this is what I'm going to tell you. I fully anticipate in 2025 that we see rates drop into the fives. If if I was on the market right now looking to purchase a home, I'd want to buy today. And the reason being is because if I wait until those rates drop into the, let's say, let's say they drop to five and a half, let's say five and a quarter, hypothetically speaking, let's say they, they get to that point. Everybody that's been on the sidelines is now going to enter the market, which is going to create a very competitive environment, which is going to increase home values because now sellers, you know, it's, it's not so much of a buyer's market. Now it's going to switch and it's going to be on the seller side and they're going to be able to increase that home value 20, 30, 40,000. So you might save a point, a point and a half on your rate, but you just spent 30, 40, maybe even more $50,000 more on this home. And you're going to start seeing appraisal gaps. You're going to start seeing more cash buyers. You're going to start seeing this crazy market that we saw back in 21 and into 22. So basically what we're seeing with the, on the buyer side is we're seeing a lot of people, you know, waiting to purchase. And I don't really think that's a great idea. And the reason I don't think that's a good idea is because once these rates do drop, you're going to have everybody flood the market and sellers are going to really be able to increase price on home. You're going to see a lot more appraisal gaps. You're going to see a lot more cash buyers enter the market. You're going to see 20, 30 different offers, and it's going to be really frustrating. You know, so rates right now, compared to where they've been in the last 18 months, are pretty favorable. So they're looking a lot better right now. Um, Are they exactly where we want them to be? No. But the good news is, is, you know, once you purchase, you can always refinance down the road into a better rate. So instead of dealing with the crazy traffic, you know, in six to 12 months, which I, I do anticipate, Buy now, wait for rates to really, you know, start trending downwards and just refinance and do a better rate. And you're going to save money in the long run because if you spend $30,000, $40,000 to save a point on rate in six to eight months from now, that don't really make sense to me. Right. You know, we can't change it. We can't change your loan amount. You know, we can't refinance you a new loan amount. We can refinance you a new rate though, you know, so, um, but it's Mm, tough, you know, and I understand it's tough because- if you look at starter homes right now, those prices have increased. You know, uh, mm-hmm. first-time home buyers, you know, they're definitely at a disadvantage right now versus five years ago. Because if you look at the average home price in Lincoln County five years ago versus today, it's definitely increased. You have Intel coming. I think those prices are going to continue to increase. So, you know, at some point we need to get a grip, um, A, on inflation, B, on wages, and then, you know, because rents are coming down either. Rent, rents are increasing. Home values are increasing. Um, obviously, rates are, are a big topic because that can really lower that, that monthly, you know, 
debt that's going out each month. So, you know, the other thing we've been talking a lot about too is is credit card debt. You know, you got a lot of people that currently live in homes. Yeah, you might have a great rate right now. Let's say your rate's three and a half percent. Let's say you purchased in 2020 when rates were really good, but now you've racked up $90,000 in credit card debt. What are the rates on those? You know, those rates are upwards of 30% right now, which is mind boggling to me. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's, those are great points. So to that end, are you seeing more people come after refinances to pull that equity out to cover debt that they may have that's, you know, higher rates? Are you seeing more refinance activity? We are, we are seeing a little bit more. I want to say that we're seeing a lot by no means, because obviously a lot of people um, are really, really stuck on, on those really good rates. Um, We are seeing more equity line of credit. So, so you're going to see some more Mm. home equity line where you can, you can access the, the equity in the home without changing, um, you know, that first lien rate, uh, you know, that your main rate on your home. So we, we're right. seeing some of those, but those rates are higher too. So an equity line of credit, sometimes those rates are 10 to 15%, depending on, on you know, who you go with. Um, so I don't know, wow. know the good answer um, as far as home buying right now, though. I think it's a, still a good time because as you said, it's not as competitive right now. There's less folks... Right you know, in the market. So your, your offer has a much better chance of being accepted right now. Yeah, absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. And I think that there are definitely some listings that are becoming stale. And if someone has a listing on the market for 60 days, 90 days, you know, they may be somebody that needs to sell and somebody who needs to sell, there may be a deal there, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And there could be, and, I'm shocked, honestly, like in this, it, it seems like this has happened almost overnight. At least it feels like to me, but I'm shocked at some of the properties I see listed that even some of my listings that people aren't taking more stabs at them, even for discounts, like just throw an offer in that's maybe even insulting and see where we go. And I've had actual right. sellers tell me I've had sellers a couple, you know, just yesterday I had a seller who I have a listing. They said, Hey, I just want somebody to make me an offer. I, it, it could be um, insulting. I don't care. I just want a starting point. So That's there the could be opportunities out point. there. You know, we got to start conversations. And, yep. you know, being paralyzed in fear isn't really the way to be right now, you know, because you may get a really awesome deal. And like I said, you can refinance a higher rate down the road. Yeah. And like you said, you can't lower the mortgage amount, the, the, the debt uh, amount, but you can definitely lower the payment and the rate when you refi. So and if you lower it by waiting, one to two points, you know, it's, it can be an incredible savings. And don't forget right now, we're still doing two, one buy downs. Um, sometimes mm. we're seeing a three, two, one buy down. And basically, you know, the way this works, I think we talked about it before, you know, the seller contributes proceeds from the sale to home. Basically that money will go into an escrow account. And as a buyer for that first full 12 months, I'm going to get a two point reduction in my rate which is a huge savings. And then the following year, I'm going to get a one point reduction in my rate. In the meantime, can I refinance? And if that answer is yes, I'm not going to lose that money in the escrow. It's going to go towards the principal. When I refinance, it's going to lower my, my principal amount. And then I'm going to, I'm never going to pay these higher rates. But like I said, rates are looking a lot hmm. better and we're seeing a lot better rates. I'm, I'm quoting more rates in the mid sixes right now. I've even seen some near six and a quarter. You know, yes, that's a higher rate, but last December I was quoting rates in the eights. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not there right now. I don't, well, I pray that we never get there again in the near future, but I don't think that we are. I think we're going to start seeing some relief on this side. But like I said, when those rates, and I think, I think when people start seeing a five in front of that rate, that's when everybody's going to flood the market. You know, it's weird how consumers minds work you know that's why that's why they list prices you know instead of listing you know li- instead of listing twenty thousand they'll list at nineteen thousand nine ninety nine ninety nine well what is that right. that's a twenty thousand dollar price point but your mind doesn't think that your mind says oh i'm getting a deal you know and it's the same way with these rates once those rates start saying fives in front of it i think we're going to see buyers just flood that market okay that makes sense so yeah i think there is a magic number there i thought it would be my guess it was going to be like six and a half. We'd see more activity, but we're close to that. And obviously, I mean, if you look at the internet, it's we're close to that um, on Mortgage News Daily. But according to you, you know, you're at six and a quarter and you may still not see that stuff, um, you know, c- come through 
through yet as far as the activity, the increase in activity. Well, have okay, seen, that's I, great. I've personally seen an increase in activity in the last, you know, three to four weeks. I've, I've taken more oh, loan I'm... applications. Um, nothing that I would necessarily write home about, you know, because obviously during 2020, 21 and 22, it was gangbusters, you know, or I mean, those rates were incredible. We're talking, you know, twos, threes, you know, sometimes uh, just a little bit higher than that. And it was basically free money. And we're not, we're not quite there right now, but these rates aren't too far off. You know, the average, if you look at average rates over time, the average 30 year conventional rate is near 5%. So we're not too far off that right now. But like I said, if if you sit around and you wait, you're going to be losing money because these, these sellers are going to have the leverage. They're going to increase their, you know, their, their, their home, home purchase amount. And you're just going to end up spending more in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Okay. Well, so that was good. I mean, do you think, so to wrap this up, like if you're out, so in summary, if you're out there looking to maybe buy a house, if you're a first time buyer, what are the couple levers that you can pull to really help the first time buyer? I mean, I knew you mentioned buying down the rate. Maybe they can get a deal if a house has been sitting for a while, but is there anything else a first time buyer could do? So I do a lot of no money down uh, programs with first time home buyers. The state of Ohio actually offers um, it's the Ohio housing finance agency. They offer um, upwards of 5% down payment assistance for first time home buyers. Um, now they do set their own rates. The rates are just a little bit higher than what I'm seeing right now. But a lot of times for first time home buyers, their issue is that down payment, you right. know? So if we can help alleviate that issue and if you can come to the closing table with little to no money, I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a way to get started. Um, so we see that, uh, obviously, uh, if you're in the military, VA loans are my favorite loans. Those are no money down. That's a no money down pro- program. Those rates are pretty darn good right now. And then if you're yeah. out in the rural area, you can look at USDA and USDA is a no money down product, but it's property specific. So that property has to be in a USDA designated area for it to be eligible. Now there are income um, limits. Uh, there's also purchase limits and things like that. And that also applies to that, uh, OFA, uh, first time home buyer program to the state of Ohio. Um, but the first step, and I think a lot of, a lot of times the, the first step is just reaching out to somebody like yourself or myself to start that conversation. Yep. Because I think a lot of people are fearful just to even get started because they think the answer is going to be no. And they, they may be surprised that they have ap- options now, and they didn't think they had options. You know, a lot of, a lot of times people still think that you need 20% down to purchase a home. And that's just not the case. And the amount of times that I still hear that just kind of blows me away. Cause I'm like, we're so far away removed from that, you know, but a lot of times they're getting advice from their, you know, grandfather or their uncles or, you know, people that bought houses 25 years ago and things have changed in the last 25 years a lot. Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I think um, I think that's true. I think you're you're 100 correct. I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there, and whenever I talk to a first time buyer and I ask them if they've been qualified, uh, pre qualified, and they say no, and then I send them your information, they um, oftentimes will kind of hesitate to take the information, and I always encourage them to reach out because Absolutely. you're going to counsel them as to what they can do and what they can't do, and then they know their options. I do think it's a fear. You're right. I think it's a fear of people uh, maybe hearing no. And so they don't want to hear it that. Is. And they don't want to feel it bad is. about themselves, which I understand. And here's the thing, though. If, if it's a no today, it's not a no forever. You know, if, right. there, if, there's, a, if, there's, a, if there's a will, there's a way. So I'm going to educate yeah. you on what you need to do. So if there's a couple things on credit that might be hurting you, you know, I have programs uh, available to me um, and tools available to me that I can run your information and we can really pinpoint what you need to do to get yourself in a position to buy. Not only that, I have a mobile app. It's called Equity 247. I can text it right over to you. It's going to take you maybe 15 minutes to complete the application. And then what it's going to ask for is, let's say, pay stubs, W-2s. You can upload right from your phone. So I can take a picture with my camera on my phone and upload mm-hmm. into the app. And the app's encrypted. So your information is going to stay very secure. We know there's a bunch of people out there trying to steal information. Um, so, I, you know, my goal is to keep your information secure. The app is the best way to do it. There's a portal that you upload into it comes flows right over to me and I'm going to have, I'm going to have an answer to you typically within 24 hours on if we can buy. And if we can, I'm going to send you a pre-approval letter, 
pre-approval letter is going to be good for 120 days. So it's going to give you and your realtor um, ample time to get out there to, you know, look for that house. And in the meantime, do rates come down in 120 days? I think so. I think we're going to see a rate reduction. Yeah. And instead of sitting on the sidelines, you know, wondering if I'm good to go, you already know you're good to go. And let's say you're not ready until October, November. And then you see that perfect house. You have that pre-approval in hand. You can just pull the trigger. That's great. So obviously a lot of help for first time buyers, a lot of different options. The key is to reach out and get started. So Brock, if someone wants to get a hold of you to get that process started, whether they be a first time home buyer or not, what should they do? How do they get a hold of you? So my clients have my, my personal cell phone number and I'm available Monday through Sunday, nine until nine, usually a little bit later than that. I tend to be a night owl most nights. So if you text me at, you know, after <laughs> nine o'clock, that's usually perfectly fine. But my cell phone number is 740-616-3565. Text or call. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm usually putting a lot of information on Facebook about w- what the market's doing yep. and things like that. You can follow me on there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the first step is just to ask questions and, and, you know, fill out an application. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't want my credit pulled, you know, a hard hit on my credit. Well, that's only on there for a short period of time. And usually it's, it's less than a five-point hit on credit. But like I tell a lot of clients, okay. if you watch your credit from month to month, your credit – is like a living and breathing organism. Basically it's, it's ebbing and flowing every month, whether you do anything or you don't. So if you're worried about five points, I wouldn't necessarily be too concerned about it. Um, the other nice thing too, is once you pull that credit, you actually have a 14 day window to shop mortgages. So, um, hmm. you know, let's say that you applied with, let's say rocket mortgage 10 days ago and you don't like what they're offering. Well, you can still apply with me. I can pull your credit and it's not going to be a second hard hit on your credit because it's going to it's going to give you a window to shop. So, you know, a lot of times what happens too is folks will reach out to one of these big banks and they right. you know, they're, they're not getting very favorable pricing, they're not getting very very favorable rates and they're kind of like, "Well, I can't afford that. I'm a local mortgage banker. I would highly encourage you to reach out to me because we do things a little bit different." Yep. Agreed. I agree. Brock does a great job. He's right downtown Newark, Ohio in Licking County, so he knows the local market. And it's he's a guy, folks, I can tell you, he's a guy you can just call anytime, he'll help you, but you can also just go downtown Newark and it's a, it feels like a small community and and it, it and the, but the company has, re, obviously their equity resources, they have resources, but their uh, professional outfit that, um, yeah, is a fantastic partner as you're out there house hunting. So, all right, Brock, hey, thanks a lot for the time today. We'll uh, do this again soon. Sounds good. Sounds good. Have a great weekend. You too, man. Appreciate it.